Hello, my name is Judy Harris, and I'm looking forward to talking with you in October. I will be traveling to Europe to join you at the conference in Madrid from my home in the United States. I live in the eastern part of the United States, fairly close to Washington, D.C., in the state called Virginia. I live and work in eastern Virginia on a peninsula between two rivers in a town called Williamsburg. Williamsburg is home to the College of William and Mary, my employer. I'm a professor in the School of Education and my specialization is helping teachers to integrate use of digital tools and resources into their teaching. I've been doing this work for about 30 years and I find it to be immensely interesting and engaging, but also quite challenging in surprising ways. Let me illustrate with a commercial that's being shown currently in the U.S. This is a classical design we did in Milan. This is a postmodern residence in Milan. won five prestigious awards. Haki headquarters in Kyoto. To see our architecture, you don't look around the corner, you look around the world. So, what can I do for you? Design a house around this. It's preposterous, isn't it? Design a house around a faucet. But in many ways, we've been asking teachers in many parts of the world to do something similar for about 25 years. We've been asking them to design learning experiences for students around digital tools and resources. Now, as ridiculous as that sounds, in some ways, it's understandable that we've made this mistake and made it for so long. These tools are incredibly powerful. They have enormous potential for helping students to learn even better and teachers to teach even better. But the problem is when we look to the tools to suggest how we should teach, it's like having a shiny new hammer. Because when you have a shiny new hammer, everything can look like a nail. Another way to say this is that the tail wags the dog. When we look to the technology to suggest how we should teach, how we should help students to learn, we have it backwards. The good news is that recently, researchers and educators have started looking at technology integration in a completely new way. So the title for my talk at the conference is No More Tails Wagging Dogs, New Understanding of Curriculum-Based ICT Integration. This new understanding is understanding of the knowledge that teachers need to be able to integrate technologies effectively into students' learning and into teachers' teaching. I'll talk a lot more about this during the time at the conference, but as a brief overview, let me introduce this notion. Teachers need essentially three types of intersecting knowledge to be able to integrate technologies effectively. They need technological knowledge about the technologies and how to operate them. They need pedagogical knowledge, knowledge of how to teach effectively. And they need content knowledge or curriculum knowledge, knowledge of what it is that they're teaching or that they're helping their students to learn. But as the diagram indicates, these types of knowledge intersect. We learned about 25 years ago that teachers' pedagogical knowledge and their content or curriculum knowledge intersect with each other. General knowledge about how to teach isn't enough. Knowledge of the content itself isn't enough to help students to learn effectively. Teachers, in addition, 
need what Lee Shulman called pedagogical content knowledge, knowledge of how to teach particular content well. Now that technologies are part of this diagram, teachers also need technological content knowledge. That is knowledge of how to best select the tools and resources that will help students to learn particular aspects of content or curriculum. Teachers also need technological pedagogical knowledge, that is knowledge of how to teach well with these new digital tools and technologies. All of these different intersecting, interdependent types of knowledge together are considered to be technological pedagogical knowledge, or TPAC. That is the knowledge that teachers need to be able to integrate technologies effectively into students' curriculum-based learning. We realized several years ago that as complex as this knowledge is, it's actually an order more complex because of the multiple contexts in which teachers and students work together. There are many contextual influences on the knowledge that teachers need to be able to teach effectively with digital tools and resources. Among these different types of knowledge are knowledges of the technologies available, the amount of time that's available, physical space constraints, knowledge of students and their families, students' attitudes, their prior knowledge, their cultural diversity, their language diversity, their different socioeconomic levels. All of these many different contextual influences and more impact teachers' knowledge for effective technology integration. So TPAC, it turns out, is even more complex than we thought when we first conceptualized it about six years ago. And there are a number of researchers and educators that are actively working with TPAC to understand it better and to help teachers better prepare to teach effectively with digital tools and resources. There are multiple ways of helping teachers to develop their TPAC. My colleagues and I have worked with a particular method that's part of teachers' instructional planning. I'll tell you much more about this when we see each other at the conference in October. But briefly, our approach is based on teachers selecting and sequencing particular learning activities. They begin with the content or curriculum-based learning goals for a particular lesson, unit, or project. Once they've decided those learning goals, they select the learning activities and sequence those activities in the ways that they know will be most useful to the particular students with whom they're working. Once they've selected the content goals and the learning activities and sequence them, only then do they select appropriate technologies, technologies that are appropriate for the particular learning activities that they have selected, and therefore incorporate them into their instructional plan. In order to help teachers to select these learning activity types, we've created taxonomies with teacher and specialist input in six curriculum areas so far, and we're working on more as we speak. We've developed learning activity types taxonomies in mathematics, in science, in social studies, in both primary literacy and secondary English language arts, and in world languages. To give an example of just a few of these taxonomies, we worked with curriculum specialists and many teachers to form comprehensive collections of all of the different kinds of learning activity types 
in each content area that we've addressed so far. So in social studies, for example, our work showed a number of different kinds of learning activities, 15 of which help students to build their knowledge, and 27 of which help students to express their knowledge in social studies. Each taxonomy is organized very differently because each content area is quite different along with the learning activities that students can use to help them learn in those content areas. So mathematics, for example, looks quite different from social studies, as you can see here. And world languages, though similar in many ways to elementary and secondary English language arts, is quite different from math, science, and social studies. We'll talk more about these also when I see you in October. To give you just a few examples from the many, many types of learning activities in our taxonomies, here's just a, a small part of some of our social studies learning activity types. Each of the taxonomies is organized in this same way with the name of the learning activity type on the left, a brief description in the middle, and then for each learning activity type, suggested technologies that could be used well to support that particular kind of learning activity. What we found is that teachers find it very easy to integrate technologies when they first focus on the curriculum learning goals then focus on the learning activities that they're going to ask the students to use to reach those curriculum goals. And then finally, as a last step, to focus on the possible technologies that can be used based on what's available in their schools, what they and the students are comfortable with, etc. Those technology choices then come last in the instructional planning process. We've also been working, in addition to developing and testing these learning activity types taxonomies, with ways of measuring or assessing teachers' TPAC, ways that will help teachers to continue their professional learning. I'll overview these when we see each other in October also. I hope that you can come to Madrid in October to learn more. See you then.